Well, here I am with Josh Darby. Josh is a very skillful um, soft baiter, no, even though I don't quiet. normally like to say that he's because um, it'll just make his head fat. But um, here he is on a beautiful day, full moon, so it's a little bit tough. Well, you'd think it would be a bit tough, but we've had a fantastic morning, haven't we, mate? Yeah, it's been awesome. Well, pretty much won almost every cast, eh, so yeah. far. Yeah. However, it's almost near the change of the tide, hence the fact that we can now go and um, show you how to go and actually soft bait, and uh, I don't have to worry about Josh catching a monster, hopefully. But yeah, let's go through the, uh, the gear and, and the technique, mate. It's not very nice. Um, yeah, it's been great this morning. Uh, the gear that I'm using at the moment, this is the Microwave V2. I also love using the Megawave. Um, what do you like about them, mate? Uh, the Microwave V2 I like, especially when I'm in um, really shallow water, say three metres to ten metres, just because it's a bit gruntier, um, it's a bit of a gruntier blank, means you can uh, manoeuvre the fish a little easier. And uh, the Mega Wave, I've just, I've enjoyed it just because the blank's a little bit lighter actually, and so I'll fish that in kind of 15 metres plus. Um, but both of them, because of their length, allow you to get a really long uh, effective cast on, which is important. Uh, the other thing I like about both of them is they run a really long butt section. Yeah. So when you're hooked up Same. to a good fish, and especially when you hook up to kingies, you can just seat it into your hip there and it makes it really easy. Yeah, having that little fat, uh, fat butt to it um, is actually a very underrated thing. You know, it actually yeah. doesn't dig into you, it actually distributes the weight really well. And I hadn't really appreciated that until I really started looking at the different components. Yeah, yeah, so that's cool. And then I've uh, got the 9 line 20 pound braid on there and uh, running a Stratic FK, a 3000. Uh, and then on the business end here, uh, we just Bruise banana. Yeah, bruise banana, seven inch, so I'm running a long shank light bulb. We're in 20 meters here, um, and I'm only running a 3 8, but there's, as you can see, there's almost no wind, so you can get away with that, and I want to maximize my um, descent time, give the snapper a chance to see it and come up and hit it. Um, I've got a 30 pound leader on at the moment, just because I lost a few big fish recently, and I'm feeling a bit, gun shy so it hasn't actually affected the bite rate at all yeah today. that's mark's, really weird mark's running 20 pound and yeah about um, the same about the same yeah. so i'd even say maybe i've got the edge I don't know. <laughs> um anyway so for casting whatever i run about a meter of uh of a tag end on the on the leader there from the rod tip and uh we'll do a um, backhanded cast here but you just get the um the braid on your forefinger like that and i grab down here so i get a bit of leverage and can just cast out like that follow through and point it um, the direction you're wanting your bait to hit and then straight away um, if you've cast out far enough it'll create a bit of a belly so belly is the slack line there between your rod tip and where the line hits the water and uh, all I'm doing now it's going to take a while for a 3 8 to drop <sighs> down can't shoot into the Sun so I'm just gonna have to go yeah to you here all right Okay, so you're just watching your line as it goes down. Are you doing anything about the line, you know, like um, according to what it does? Yeah, I'm just, I'm watching that belly, you know, like I, I like to have just a tiny little bit of belly in the yeah, line. So like I that's what I was getting at, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but not too much, right? Because you've got too much belly. Then if you see the bite in the line, by the time you've won, wound the slack out, the fish might have let go. Either that or you don't see it at all because yeah. it's so slack. Yeah, exactly. So you've got to wind a bit out, don't you? Yeah, and then I basically... Um, I'm not hinging, which just means I'm not holding my rod at an angle to uh, where I've cast. I'm, That's right. I'm kind of right down the rod, and I'm just watching it. And uh, sometimes the bite's big enough where I, if I feel it, I'll just strike straight away. But other times I, I might just see something a little wacky happen with the line. I'm not 100% sure, so I can just do like a little half wind yeah. and see if there's any weight there. And if there is, then I'll strike. So it just depends. Um, and then you can add belly to the line if you want a little bit, just by letting um, a little bit of line out. I mean, you have to do that when the water's quite deep anyway. Um, you don't mind doing it in the middle? It's all right uh, instead of at the beginning. Yeah, I don't mind doing it in the middle on the on the way <coughs> down. It's just it is a feel thing. I don't think there's like a hard and fast rule to it. Yep. Uh, when I've touched the bottom, bottom, I can tell because that belly, rather than straightening out as it drifts down, it, it stays about the same. And uh, often, if you've got to the bottom and haven't hooked up when it's been like this, um, that's your best chance to get it, is actually on that initial descent. But you can still stay down there sometimes. Um, you can flick your bait up a little bit and let it drift back down like that. 
and again you're just doing the same thing watching the belly in the line and seeing if you get picked up the other thing you can do especially if you're over the sand is um, let that line come taut and just with a natural drift of the boat um, drag the soft bait behind so I just mix it up um, but when the fish have been hitting on the on the descent um, normally I'm not going to muck around too much um, maybe a couple of minutes or even a minute of playing around on the bottom and if I'm not getting anything then I'll um, retrieve and funnily enough sometimes uh, we've had that already this morning mm. as you retrieve I do a slow retrieve to start because sometimes a little bit of action you impart when you start retrieving is um, is something that brings a fish onto the bite absolutely so I can and now you talked to, um, just about three eighths and a half and, and that's because uh, those those weights are the best for um, being taken on the way down aren't they well it just it just depends on the variables that are at play right the they're the best, like the three eights at the moment is the best because even though we're in 20 metres, because there's no, there's not much of a drift and there's no wind, um, it's allowing me to maximise um, my drift time. But if I was in 30 metres and it was blowing, like, that wouldn't be the best. But they, they don't take that often on those real heavy weights, uh, like you're less likely to get one on the way down with a real heavy yeah, weight. some places you, you still get them, but yeah, like at the mokes you can... You can fish in 50 or 60 meters mm. there um, with a reasonably heavy jig head, and they'll still take it. Yeah, Sometimes in fact, quite often it's good to go and just uh, stop your uh, descent because, like, they swing around just like kingfish sometimes, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's mm. crazy. It's crazy. You'll just see you'll be in 60 meters, and you only be about 15 meters down, and your line will just stop, and that's because. Um, for some reason there especially, you do get it sometimes in the Hodaki, you get a little barrier sometimes and I've had it in Whanga Bay but almost every time at the Mokes you get fish in deep water that are actually predating right up in that top 20 metres of the water column which is, which is awesome, that's so much fun when it's like that. Because like a lot of people think you just can't fish you know much deeper than about 20, 20 metres yeah. but in fact uh, there's a whole just different, there's a different skill level isn't there but probably that's um, a subject for a um, for another day. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks so much, mate. Like, um, no I was hoping that you'd um, actually come through with your um, your, your great skill set and uh, that. set that hook into um, a real beauty for us. Yeah. But um, that'll have to be another day as well. Yeah. And uh, maybe we can just go and make up for it later on. But thanks, mate. That was that was actually a good rundown, and thanks, I hope uh, everyone else um, appreciates it. Ocean Angler signing out.